Hi everybody, welcome again to a, a video about uncertainties. We're going to talk about combining uncertainties today. So leading on from last time when we did absolute uncertainties and percentage uncertainties in readings and measurements, uh, today we're going to look at combining uncertainties. So a lot of times in physics um, you'll take your readings and you'll have to uh, multiply them or divide them or input them into an equation um, which makes things a bit problematic when you're dealing with uncertainties. Uh, but there are some simple rules which can make life much easier for you. So the first rule is in the situation where you're adding or subtracting measurements. And the simple rule is this. Always add absolute uncertainties. So if you're adding or you're taking away, always add absolute uncertainties. Right, so the, the example that I normally use is if I uh, had a scale like this and I was measuring the length of a pencil, it's possibly the best pencil you've ever seen drawn. Uh, and then I'm going to draw my scale marks along here. So when you think of a, a pencil uh, uh, against a ruler, maybe you start measuring at zero. Okay, uh, so if you start measuring at zero, what you're doing is you're taking a reading uh, here, and that reading is zero plus or minus. 0 0.5 millimeters. If this is a 30 centimeter ruler, um, so even at zero, we have an uncertainty. So here you're actually taking two readings. Uh, so say this was, um, let's stay in millimeters, 110 plus or minus 0 0.5 millimeters. So we're taking a reading on a ruler which measures to the nearest millimeter. So our absolute uncertainty is um, plus or minus half the smallest scale division. So a simple way to do this um, is to say that for our, uh, let's call our value uh, Z. So if our, if our length, which is Z, uh, is 110, minus 0, then Z equals 110 millimeters. Okay, now my uncertainty in Z equals the uncertainty, and call it Y, minus the uncertainty in X. These are our two readings here. Uh, that's not a minus, that's a plus, because we always add absolute uncertainty. So we get 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, so we're going to get point, no, we're going to get one millimeter. So our, our final expression for Z is 110 plus or minus one millimeter. We always have to take into account a reading at zero when we're reading off a scale. We could explain why this is the case. So if we take a look at Z max, so our highest reading for Z is 110.5 minus, so that's going to be minus, minus 0 0.5 in this case. So our highest reading for Z is going to be 111 millimeters. Our lowest reading for Z this is based on the uncertainties in our readings, is 109.5 minus 0 0.5 millimeters. Uh, that gives us a lowest value of 109 millimeters. So if we average those out, we get 110, and 111 is one higher, and 109 is one lower. So that takes us back to 110 plus or minus one millimeter. So anytime you're adding 
or taking away measurements, you always add the absolute uncertainties. Okay, I'm hoping to make this a shorter video today. Uh, our second situation uh, in our, our first combining uncertainties video is if you're multiplying or dividing measurements. Now, building on what we did last time, uh, we did absolute uncertainties and percentage uncertainties. So for adding and subtracting, you always add the absolute uncertainties. For multiplying and dividing, you always add the percentage uncertainties. For example, if I was measuring um, a velocity, and uh, my velocity is displacement over time, then I had my S, let's say it was um, 10 plus or minus 1 meters, not a very precise reading, but it's quite large, 10 meters, uh, and my time was 1 plus or minus 0 0.2 seconds. Okay, so my calculation for V becomes 10 divided by 1, which means I'm going at 10 meters per second. To find my uncertainty in V, in fact, I have to find my percentage uncertainty in V first. So if you remember, for our percentage uncertainty, we took the uncertainty in the value, divided by the value, multiplied by that by 100, and that gave us the percentage uncertainty in our value. Okay? So for S, we take 1 over 10, and multiply that by 100. So that gives us um, a percentage uncertainty in S, which is going to be 10%. Now because we're dividing, we're going to add our percentage uncertainties. So in this case, we want to add the percentage uncertainty in T. So for T, uh, let's do this one. So for T, I've got 0 0.2 seconds is my uncertainty divided by 1, multiplied by Y100, that gives us 20%. You can do that in your calculators, or however you see fit. So, our, our total uncertainty, our percentage uncertainty in V, equals 30%. So if you're asking a question, what is your percentage uncertainty um, in, in V, then you'd give that as your answer. However, if you were expressing a value for V, then you'd have to change this back into um, an absolute uncertainty. Okay? So we take this, so we take our equation up here, and we rearrange that to get our percentage uncertainty in our value. Uh, well, the easiest way to do it is if we take x, divide x by 100, multiply that by a percentage uncertainty, we get back our absolute uncertainty. Uh, so that's our general form. Um, I'm going to multiply those. So for us, we've got a value of 10, which we'll divide by 100, and then multiply by 30. Okay, uh, so that gives us an absolute uncertainty of 3, and it's going to be in this case 3 meters per second. Okay, so my final expression for V, V equals 10 plus or minus 3 meters per second. Quite a long winded process, and you can see how quickly these uncertainties add up. So anytime you're doing uh, an equation, you're adding 
uh, if you're doing an equation, you're multiplying or dividing, you're adding the percentage uncertainties. So it's really in our best interest to minimize um, our percentage uncertainties as far as we can. And another day, we'll talk about that. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time.